Good morning, friends. To those who are online and to those who are present, it's a great joy to be here. For those who don't know, my name is Cam, and it's a joy to be here, and a joy to respond to these two beautiful readings. Let me open with prayer as we, as we head in and respond. Gracious God, we give thanks for our lives, for your love, and for your word. Pray, Holy Spirit, that you, you speak to us, encourage and guide. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, before becoming a bishop in June 2014, it was my joy to be the lead minister of a large multicultural parish in North Rockhampton. The parish then had seven congregations across five sites, and one of the congregations worshipped in Dinka from South Sudan. One of the key partnerships that developed in the later years of that time was a formal chaplaincy role for me at a local school. The school paid the parish for my time, and with that income, the parish employed one of the associate ministers. After it was announced that I would be moving to Toowoomba, the school in which I was chaplain offered to make me a bishop's crozier as a farewell gift. You design it, they said, and we will make it. Now, if you're not familiar with a crozier, it's one of the things a person is presented with when they become a bishop. And the shape of it is a reminder that they are to be like a shepherd who follows Jesus, the great shepherd, and who cares for the people entrusted to them as a shepherd cares for their sheep. It was a generous offer, and I thought and prayed about the design seeking God's guidance. Since being a student at school, I have been fascinated by many elements of science and the way that science it can often help us better understand the world and our place in the ever-expanding universe that God has made. Consequently, I ask that the crozier begin with the point of singularity named in Big Bang Theory and unfold from this into the curve of a crozier before opening up into a helix structure of deoxyribonucleic acid. No pressure. This metal component would then be joined to a thick timber staff, which would have the school motto engraved on it, together with the chemical equation for photosynthesis and the names of women and men who have helped shape a Western understanding of the world. The head of design technology audibly gulped as I explained what I imagined and I showed him the sketches I had prepared. But he did a beautiful job with the assistance of year 12 students. For the Hebrew writers of Genesis and the Greek writers of John's Gospel, the two readings we've just heard, there was no understanding of the world being made up of atoms, that a process in plants we call photosynthesis converts light energy into chemical energy, that planet Earth moves around the sun, or that our sun is one of at least 100 billion stars in a galaxy known as the Milky Way. However, what those ancient writers did have is a profound sense that all of these things had been created and that they had been created by God. Let's revisit that first verse from Genesis. It was initially written, we think, about 3,400 years ago. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth. There is an inference in this that before the beginning, before anything was created, before there was any living thing and before there was any human history, God was real and God was present. The second verse is interesting because it talks about a formless dark void which had a wind from God blowing over the water. In the translation we heard it said the breath of God moving over the water, the ruach of God. In this verse the writer affirms that God then created, bringing light to that which had previously been in darkness and order from what had previously been chaos. Then God created water, land, plants, the sun, the moon, the stars, all kinds of fish and insects, birds and animals, before finally making humankind. Making humankind, we are told, in God's own image, both male and female. This is a seminal story in Jewish and Christian faith, for it clearly expresses the understanding that God is the creator. God is the one who makes everything possible in the known and unknown world, even the known and unknown universe. Jesus and the Jewish community he was part of shared this understanding that God was creator, was life-giving, and was unimaginably powerful. 
I wonder what things in the natural world have caused you to wonder over the last little while. And I ask because wonder can often point us to God. For in the midst of wonder, we might say, wow, and go on to thank you. It could have been a sunrise, a lover's kiss, a baby's birth, meaningful rain after drought, a seed germinating, an ancient tree, a rolling wave, an electrical storm. Can I just say, I wish I could have watched Lauren do translate all of that. There are so many things that can drive us to our knees with a sense of wonder. Wonder that God has made these things possible and that we, who are both infinitely small and infinitely loved, have witnessed it or have experienced it. At Christmas, we celebrate the audacious understanding that God became physically present to humanity in the person of Jesus Christ. Not as a burning bush or a pillar of fire, but in the physical, vulnerable reality of human gestation and birth. We rightly love the accounts in Matthew's Gospel of angels, prophecy, stars, and wise men. Perhaps even more the account in Luke's Gospel of an angel's visit, an emperor's census, a humble birth, and shepherds who had been advised that God was doing something new. However, in John's Gospel, the last of the Gospels to be written, we think some 60 years after Jesus lived on earth, there is no nativity scene. There are no angels, no shepherds, no wise men or stable. But there is a new way of understanding who Jesus was and continues to be. In this, there are strong echoes to the Genesis verse we began with. For John's Gospel begins in the same way, in the beginning but then introduces a radically new terminology. The Koine Greek writer of John's Gospel wrote, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Greek, the words are NRK en hologos, kai hologos en proston theon, kai theos en hologos. You would have heard, as I read the Greek version, the term hologos three times. And this term is translated into English as the word. If we came unprepared to this passage, we might find it strange because the verse does not say, in the beginning there was God. It says, in the beginning there was the word. So what is being affirmed in this by the writer of John's Gospel? To understand, we need to touch base with what the term hologos, or the word, meant in classical Greek philosophical thinking. For 600 years before Christ, the Greek philosopher Heraclitus suggested that there was, or could be, a cosmic reasoning power he termed logos. This was developed further by a Jewish philosopher called Philo, who lived about 100 years before Jesus. Philo suggested that the logos was the intermediary between God and the rest of creation. Further, that the Logos was present in the world while being at the same time the mind of God. The richness of this understanding is poetically expressed in the first four verses of John's Gospel, which affirm in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things came into being through him, and without him was not one thing that came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. For the early readers and listeners of this gospel, this would have been readily understood because the word was a familiar term from both Greek and Jewish philosophy. By the time John's gospel was written, the federation of small groups that made up the early Christian church had experienced the Holy Spirit empowering them with gifts and sustaining them through persecution and all kinds of trouble. That same Holy Spirit promised by Jesus and sent by him. The introduction to John's Gospel does not affirm Jesus as a son of Mary, but rather Jesus as the Word. Jesus as the Word who was with God and was God and who as God brought all things into being. I think there is retrospective richness in these verses from John, who guided and inspired by God's Spirit, offers a three-part affirmation, explanation, and proclamation. 
that Jesus as God came into the life of the world as a human being, but was largely rejected or unrecognised by the people of his time. Remember King Herod order, ordering innocent children to be killed when Jesus was a child, and Pontius Pilate as Roman governor washing his hands of responsibility for an injustice. In John's Gospel, verse 10, he was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. That Jesus came as a Jew to the Jewish community of his time, but was largely rejected by them. Remember the crowds crying, crucify him, or the chief priests and the Pharisees unable or unwilling to acknowledge him. John's Gospel, chapter 11. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. That Jesus, as life giver, Lord and Saviour, brought new life, new purpose and new hope to those who believed in him, and who believed in him then, and all who have come to believe in him through the ages since that time, including us gathered here. From John's Gospel, chapter 12 and 13. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So as we look forward to Christmas, and as we decorate our homes, send Christmas cards, buy Christmas presents, fill the fridge with good things, may the Holy Spirit renew within us a sense of wonder that God became uniquely present to time and human history in the person of Jesus. Wonder at the difference that same Jesus has made to the life of the world and to our own lives. Wonder that we are known and loved by him and are called to follow him and use our little gifts to make a difference for good. For the word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Amen. Amen.